Hello and welcome once again to Intro to Computer Games and Simulations from Lorain County Community College. I'm your instructor this semester, Mike Substelny, and we are pleased this week to have with us Mr. Lee Colson from Blackstone Launchpad. If you recall, last week we had Tom Robertson here talking about opportunities for uh, breaking into the computer game business, and Mr. Colson here is going to tell us about some of the resources that are available from Blackstone Launchpad to help you with that endeavor. And with that, I present Mr. Lee Colson. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> Good morning. I'd like to, uh, to say hello to each and every one of you uh, and, uh, and just give you a little background as to how we're going to approach uh, the subject uh, today uh, as to the resources that are located here on campus at uh, Lorain County Community College, uh, particularly the, the main campus. Uh, but before we actually get into that, what I'd like to do is go to the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, first slide as to our assumptions. The assumptions that I'm going to present to you is where we are going to start uh, with this idea. You have come up with an idea, hopefully an idea that uh, you think is going to be successful. So what are the assumptions we're going to have? <clears throat> first of all, the entrepreneurial idea. You have an entrepreneurial idea, which is both feasible and viable. Then you have an opportunity, and that opportunity is that you, you have a favorable set of circumstances that's going to take that viable, that feasible idea and be able to create a new product from that or a new service or a new business that you can then go out and <clears throat> make some money on it. Also, we're going to assume that you have the, this desire to achieve. Without that desire to achieve, you're not going to be able to go too far. Also, a PMA, positive mental attitude. Without the right positive mental attitude, you're not going to be able to go very far because you're going to get discouraged. And believe me, it's not going to be all uh, wine and roses in going through uh, your idea and getting your idea to, uh, to move forward. <clears throat> so those are the assumptions. Now what we're going to do is look at the toolkit that entrepreneurs generally have. Once we have those ideas and those understandings, then what we'll do is we'll actually get into the resources. <clears throat> so in your toolkit, you've heard many times about having a business plan. You need to have this business plan in order to move forward. Well, the general idea has been always to have this standard business plan. But there are now two types of business plans that you can have. If you see the typical business plan, written narrative. You need to have a written narrative, 25 to 35 pages long. That's a long paper. Describes what you plan to accomplish. The other type of uh, idea that you can have is a business model canvas. This business model canvas, again, it's a written narrative. It's one page and describes what you plan to accomplish. What's the difference other than sizes? Not many instructors are teaching the business model canvas because it's something brand new. And the reason it has developed is because entrepreneurs don't want to spend the time on one, one year or two year in learning all these courses and learning all this information and then trying to bring it all together and to spend time then in creating this 25 to 35 page report. Okay. If you can do it in one page, why not do it? <clears throat> and what you need to do is look into, go on to Google and go into Business Model Canvas. There's actually a textbook out for Business Model Canvas. And what it is, it's, when I say it's one page, it is one page, but it's about yay wide, about yay high, <clears throat> and it has different parts to it just like the regular business plan does. And what you do is you use post-it notes to put in your ideas for the different parts on the business canvas model. And the reason you do post-it notes is because then you can move them around as you need to move it around, as opposed to the typical business plan. A typical business plan is something that you don't, I mean it's very very stagnant. You can't move it around. So <clears throat> that's one of the, the tools that you need to have is your uh, some type of business plan 
And again, I suggest strongly that you look at the business model canvas. That is where it's going. And people say, well, the banks don't like the business model canvas. And the reason the banks don't like the business model canvas is because they don't understand it. The business model canvas has been created not for banks. It's been created for the entrepreneur, the people that want to get moving and not be stagnant uh, in, uh, in moving their entrepreneurial venture uh, forward. Okay, you have to look at a team that you're going to create. Again, we haven't gotten into the resources yet. We're just talking about the team that you're going to create. Obviously, you're going to have the founder, you being the founder, or a group of you being founders of your entrepreneurial venture. Once you have that, then you start moving forward with a management team. And in your management team, you may, in fact, have one, two, three, five. It all depends. Depends upon your product, depends upon your service. You then have within uh, or below the management team your key employees. Your key employees that are going to be there that are going to help you move your product or move your service forward. If you incorporate, either as a regular general corporation or as an LLC, you're going to have a board of directors. The board of directors is going to be the board that will be representing the owners of the company. Now, you being a founder, you're going to be one of the owners of the company, obviously. But they're going to be representing you. And you may be on the board of, of directors. And more than likely, as the founder or, or the founders, they are going to be part of the board of directors. Other professionals that you're going to need to have down the road, and again, this is not something you put together in day one. This is something that will gradually build over time. But you'll need other professionals. You'll need accountants. You'll need uh, lawyers, people that you can talk to, that you can consult with. <clears throat> now, do you need a full-time accountant? No. When you first start, you do not. What you do need is to go to uh, an accountant to have him or her set up your books. Then once a year, you turn over, you have someone that keeps uh, the books, uh, be a bookkeeper or whatever. They would then go ahead at the end of the year, the calendar year, and turn over their figures to the, uh, the accountant. You need a lawyer to set up your, uh, your organization, whether it be an LLC or be it a corporation. You do not need a lawyer on, t on uh, staff. You do not need a lawyer on the payroll. You do not need to give a, a lawyer X number of dollars per month. You just call him or her whenever you need advice from them. But when you choose a, cho a lawyer or you choose an accountant, be sure you choose someone that you have interviewed, that you have talked with. And if you feel comfortable with them, go with them. If you don't feel comfortable with them, if they intimidate you, don't go with them. Find someone that you uh, feel comfortable with. <clears throat> Other uh, people on your team are going to be your lenders and your investors. I mentioned about the business plan, about the, uh, the, bank, the bankers do not like the uh, business canvas model. Okay. If you think that you're going to be uh, funded by a bank, being a new startup company, you might as well get that out of your, your head because the banks are not interested in startups. The banks are interested in investing in those groups where uh, they have had a track record, where they know that they're going to get paid back. And they're going to get paid back with the interest, they're going to get paid back the principal, and they're also going to get paid back the, uh, uh, on time with uh, all the money that is owed. <clears throat> uh, lastly, you need a board of advisors. There's a difference between a board of directors and a board of advisors. A board of directors represents the owners of the company. Your board of advisors are people that have no control over the, uh, the monies, have no control over the company, have no control over anything. They're just merely advising. They are on a board to help give you advice. You, as a company, do not have to follow the advice that the advisors give. You may want to follow them, you may not want. Why then should you have a board of advisors? Because they can add credence to your company. They can add credence to your entrepreneurial venture. Okay. Funding purposes. When you go and you want to raise money, what do you want to look for? How do you 
uh, and what are you going to go for for money? You need money for cash flow. Cash flow is very important. If you don't have cash coming in, how are you going to be able to produce your product? How are you going to be able to employ people, etc.? For capital equipment, you may need certain amount of equipment <coughs> that you uh, need to produce your product or produce your service. You have to buy that. Are you going to buy it or are you going to lease it? That's something that you have to determine. And then product development. You cannot just go in and create the product without having money. So you need money. So you're going to need to go for, for funding uh, purposes and find ways of funding. So how do, you, how do you get funds? Well, it's your personal funds, your own pocket. That's where you start out with. If you don't put your own money into the venture, why should I as an investor put any of my money into it? If you're not going to risk your money, why should I risk my money? It's telling a message that is very loud and clear, and that message is simply that I don't think that it's going to give a good return, therefore I'm not going to put money into it. That's not the message you want to, to uh, relay uh, to anyone. <clears throat> Second group, family, friends, and yes, your credit card. Be it your Visa, be it your MasterCard, you're going to take it to the max. You need money. You need that cash advance. You know, hopefully your idea is going to sell it and you're going to be able to pay it all back. Bootstrapping. What is bootstrapping? Some of you may know, some of you may not know. But guaranteed that all of you, in fact, do bootstrapping. We all do bootstrapping. We look at how we can save some money. If we have, if we're going through a magazine or a newspaper and we see a, a coupon, we may tear that coupon out, save a buck, save two dollars, whatever. That's bootstrapping. If we decide that we're not going to go out to the movies this weekend because we want to save some money, that's bootstrapping. That's all it is. You don't have to go out and buy the most expensive. You don't have to go out and buy the actual capital goods that you need. You could just go out and lease them. Again, a form of bootstrapping. Then we get into debt funding. What is debt funding? Some of you may have already been involved in debt funding. And basically, debt funding is where you go out and you borrow money. You may borrow it from family members, you may borrow it from neighbors, you may borrow it from friends. That is simply debt funding. All the people want is their money to be repaid to them with interest over a given period of time. That is debt funding as opposed to equity funding. Equity funding is something completely different. Equity funding is where you are getting money in exchange for a part of your business. So you'll take $50,000 funding in exchange for 10% of the business. For those of you who have watched Shark Tank, that's what they're doing. They're doing equity funding. They want a piece of the action. And the way they get a piece of the action is they get an ownership, a part ownership of the actual company. The other is crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is something that is becoming very popular. If you have not seen any crowdfunding, what I would suggest that you do is write down the following. <clears throat> it's every, E-V-E-R-Y, K-E-Y dot com. Every key dot com. This is a website of <clears throat> How many of you have had the problem where you've gone in and they ask to get into a program, they ask your, uh, your login and your password, and you forget what that password is, or you forget that you put the capital of the first letter, or the first letter of the word as a capital and everything else is lowercase? Well, what every key does is they create a, they've created a bracelet. You wear the bracelet, you go in, you type in, or you, 
you approach your uh, your your computer, your uh, your laptop, uh, your your phone, anything that you have, even it's going to eventually go to your uh, front door, that you'll go in and with this this uh, bracelet on, you will not have to put in your password. You will not have to put in your username. It will automatically recognize you and recognize because of your wristband. If you lose a wristband or if it's stolen, you can deactivate it immediately. But I want you to go into that because right now they are in the middle of crowdfunding. And their goal is they opened up, I want to say, it's a group of, of Case Western Reserve students that opened up uh, this crowdfunding, I believe it was two weeks ago, give or take a couple days. And they have until uh, November, I want to say November 30th, to raise $100,000 through this crowdfunding. I checked them yesterday, and they're over $50,000 there. And, for, and you can go in, and you can actually buy... Um, you can give them donate money, and in in uh, exchange for the the money that you donate, you will get one depending upon how much you donate, one of, of the uh, the bracelets, or more. They come in multiple colors. I have no interest in the company. Uh, I I've seen them present uh, on campus here. We've also seen them present uh, in New York. Uh, I was at a, a national meeting a couple weeks ago. They presented in New York and. <clears throat> It's, it's a nice idea to see and a learning experience as to see how uh, people raise funds. <clears throat> so those are the types of uh, funding. The other thing that you have to be aware about, uh, aware, is intellectual property. Intellectual property basically consists of patents, trademarks, copyrights, and trade secrets. It's money that the creator, that the intellect that created it, is paid for. So all of your textbooks are copyrighted. And why are they copyrighted? It's because they created the book. They get paid for every book that is sold. So if you have a book in this course and you are paying X number of dollars for it, they may be getting $5, $10, $15, whatever the amount is, of a scrape from your purchase price the author actually gets. When you multiply that by the number of sections uh, each school has, by the number of schools, that, that can be big money. And that can be yours if you have that intellectual property. So if, going back to uh, every key, that intellectual property for the wristband, they have a uh, number of patents pending on, on theirs. And that's what you want to do, is you want to protect yourself on that. So, <clears throat> we've, we have this toolkit that we now have that we, we know that we need to create in order to uh, go forward. What are the resources here on our campus that are available to you? Well, you can get a one-year certificate in entrepreneurship. You can get a two-year associate's degree in entrepreneurship here on campus. And you can also get a four-year bachelor's degree through the, the university partnership with the uh, University of uh, Toledo. University of Toledo will recognize all the courses that you take here uh, for the two-year uh, associate's degree, and then they offer courses that are basically on our North Ridgeville campus, and you can get your entire degree right here in, in Lorain County without having to travel to, uh, to Toledo. <clears throat> so that, educationally, you can expand on your, uh, your degrees uh, that way. Other things that are on campus, Blackstone Launchpad. Blackstone Launchpad is a program that is free to all students. It's free to alumni. It's free to staff and faculty. And it's located on, the, uh, on our campus, on our main campus, at, uh, in the library on the first floor, across from financial aid. Uh, if any of you have walked through that building, uh, where the, the office with the green, uh, the the bright green stripe going across the, uh, the windows. Uh, feel free to come into there. Uh, Launchpad is a program that was developed by the University of Miami in Florida to reach out and help those students who are interested in promoting and uh, creating an entrepreneurial venture. Entrepreneurial venture can be uh, 
owned by one individual or multiple individuals. But you can come into Blackstone uh, because we use their program, the University of Miami's program. And the way it has grown is Blackstone Charitable Foundation out of New York City has come in and they've talked with Miami and they've worked out a, uh, uh, a partnership with the University of Miami where they wanted Miami to take it across the country. And what they did is Blackstone Charitable Foundation put up $50 million for Miami to take it across the country. In 2012, in August of 2012, uh, uh, Blackstone Launchpad came into Ohio, into Northeast Ohio, and they approached four schools, Case Western Reserve, Kent State, and Baldwin-Wallace. And then they wanted to try a community college, and so they came to uh, Lorain County Community College and approached us. And, uh, and all four schools opened in August of 2012. We worked together with the Burton Dean Morgan Foundation, which is a local foundation in Hudson, Ohio. And we actually will coach students from having just the idea all the way through running their, their, uh, their business. We have some students that already had a business. They've come through uh, Blackstone, and we've coached them going forward. Uh, we, we do not offer any money. There are no monies available from our program, but we have uh, connections and sources that we can refer you to to go ahead and get monies. All of our members in Blackstone, again, there's no cost. All the members of Blackstone Launchpad <clears throat> also have available that they can carry their product at the bookstore. And the bookstore will, whatever the price is that you, uh, you put on, uh, you place on your, uh, your product, uh, the bookstore, bookstore will sell it for you. They will collect the sales tax for you. So you do not need a vendor's license for selling it within the bookstore. They will collect the sales tax from the, uh, the buyers. They will submit the sales tax to the state of Ohio. They will charge you a 20% charge of the gross amount. That 20% they do not keep. They, ta they take that 20% and once a month they, all the sales uh, that they have from uh, Blackstone product, they take 20% of that and they give it to the uh, foundation, the college foundation. And it's going into a fund, a student adventure fund. Uh, so that <clears throat> students who need money to create a corporation or need some seed money can go ahead and apply to the foundation for that. That's what Blackstone is all about. We meet on one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I have some handouts for you that uh, will take you through it. Uh, all you need to do is go right into the uh, college uh, website, and the college will, in fact, uh, if you type in Blackstone, it will take you right to our, uh, our uh, web page on there. <clears throat> Also, we have Phoebe 3. Phoebe 3 is a, uh, a networking event that we have. It's on a weekly basis. It's on Wednesday, every Wednesday morning. That's why I was, uh, I was coming from there. I was a, a little late on that. Uh, we have it every uh, Wednesday morning from 10 to 11. We have entrepreneurs that come in. It's open not only to the student body, but it's open to all uh, wannabe or, in fact, entrepreneurs in uh, the greater Lorain County area and the western uh, Cuyahoga County area. And it's a networking event. Coffee is uh, provided to us uh, by uh, uh, Dunkin' Donuts across the street. Uh, it's owned by, Dunkin' Donuts is owned by a entrepreneur uh, that has been a friend of the college. Uh, he has three uh, Dunkin' Donuts uh, franchises, one in, uh, across the street from uh, main campus, one on West 150th in uh, Cleveland, and one on uh, on 58 in Amherst. And what we do is we, we talk about different things. We have how-to sessions, uh, et cetera. It's something that is given, uh, again, on a weekly basis, and uh, uh, you know, you're know you all invited to, uh, to, to come by. SBDC, SBDC student, uh, is the uh, Small Business uh, Development Center. It's located across this parking area in the DEC, the Desage. Uh, Entrepreneurial uh, Center, uh, which is located across from uh, uh, Spitzer. And uh, <clears throat> the SBDC is basically, uh, it's a federal program that is uh, governed through the state. So the state of Ohio uh, governs it. They offer uh, services, educational services, and, uh, and working with uh, the general public. The difference between SBDC and 
Blackstone Launchpad is we are, we are um, we must stay within the confines of the college campus itself, whereas SBDC can reach out to all those people who are outside. But it's available to you as students. So both uh, SBDC and Blackstone is available to you. GLIDE. GLIDE stands for Great Lakes Innovation De uh, uh, Development uh, Enterprise. And what GLIDE is, GLIDE is also located in the DEC building. And what GLIDE is all about is they help basically glide businesses through uh, through the entrepreneurial venture. They are also available to all the students uh, on there. <clears throat> Part of the thing that, uh, one of the things that Glide will do is they have the Innovation Fund. The Innovation Fund is something that is, it was created by the, the college and it was funded by uh, the Third Frontier, a state of Ohio uh, program. And they have basically, they have two, two types of monies that you can go for. Uh, you can go for a $25,000 grant for your product if your product is in the technology end and they are very liberal as to what, tech, what technology in fact consists of. They also have <clears throat> the $25,000 is simply a grant. You do not have to pay it back. There's no requirement. They also have a $100,000 uh, uh, grant that you do have to pay back if you are successful. So that $100,000, if you are successful, would be paid back, and that then goes back into the fund so that they can give it out to another uh, young company that is starting out. Uh, the Desage uh, Business and Entrepreneurship Center, or the DEC, is a building that is sort of over there in the woods. Uh, they added a, a, a building to the back of it, which is a smart center. The Desage Entrepreneur Center is basically for entrepreneurs. Uh, if you consider yourself an entrepreneur, and all of you should consider yourself entrepreneurs, it's something that you should go over there, uh, look around. Uh, it's open to you as students. Uh, if you've seen a lot of construction going on, what they've done, what the college has done is they've tried to incorporate it now as part of our campus because they are on our campus, but because of that long stretch of, uh, of parking area, uh, they've now put in sidewalks going directly over there. So go over there. You can go over as a group. You can go over there as, uh, uh, as an individual. Uh, just go into the, uh, the main desk and just tell them that you're there and that you want to look around. Uh, we teach our entrepreneurship classes uh, over there. I teach Entrepreneurship 200, uh, which is taught actually in that building. Uh, all the entrepreneurship classes are, are taught in that building. And the, the classes that we have uh, currently is entrepreneurship, uh, general entrepreneurship, and then entrepreneurial management, entrepreneurial marketing, entrepreneurial uh, finance, new venture creation, and uh, entrepreneurial applications. All courses that will go towards your, uh, your major in your associate degree. The Northeast Ohio Entrepreneurial Ecosystem. If you, in fact, want to become an entrepreneur, you need to know what is going on in greater Northeast Ohio. You have to link into that. Uh, there's a lot of things that are going on in Cleveland, a lot of uh, activity for entrepreneurs. Uh, there's Shaker Launch House, there's Jumpstart. There's all kind of programs that are out there that are open to each and every one of you. You need to go ahead and start finding it. Those are sources off our campus, but they're still available to you. There's generally no charge to them. Uh, again, they're educational. They're also a networking event. In networking, you know, <clears throat> a lot of us say, well, we don't have big networks. But in fact, you do have big networks. You have, if you look at, let's say you're taking four courses here on campus, you have four separate networks right there. Uh, your family is a network. Your friends are a uh, network. Your, uh, your neighborhood are, uh, are all considered networks. And it has been shown, uh, and, and it's a proven fact, that between 40 and 50 percent of the new ideas that are developed come from networking uh, uh, events. That that's where the ideas actually come up from. So if you want to come up with new ideas, and the idea that you may have in the back of your mind right now is not going to be the only idea that you have. It's going to be something that's going to continue to grow. Um, if you look at uh, Bill Gates, uh, Bill Gates has had one idea. 
but his idea has expanded and look at all the things that Microsoft is now doing. So it's just, you know, that's something that's going to be continuing, continuing uh, to grow. Global Entrepreneurship Week, that's coming up next week. It's uh, all of next week, Monday, uh, Monday through Thursday. I also have a uh, outline of things uh, that will be going on campus. Uh, there's some educational things on Monday. Um, business basic uh, overview uh, from 2 to 4 on Monday at the DEC, the Desi Entrepreneurial Center. Uh, at 4 o'clock there will be then a 15 to 20 minute uh, presentation on how to network and then it will be followed by an actual networking event that you can go to, learn how to network, how to go in and some of the ideas that you can get from uh, networking and then go in and uh, uh, talk to people and see how you can network on there. On Tuesday, uh, there's a student competition. Uh, if uh, you have an idea and you want to pitch your idea, you can in fact pitch it. Um, we've come to basically the cutoff time, but if there's anyone in this class that uh, is interested, uh, see me after class and we can possibly get you still into that competition. Uh, first place is $500. Uh, second place is, uh, I think it's $300. And then uh, third place is $150 on that. Something that uh, you know you can make some money on. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, <clears throat> if you have class at uh, 11 o'clock, maybe uh, your instructor can uh, give you some extra credit if you go to a keynote speak, uh, speech that's going to be on on basically social networking. Social networking is going to be right over at uh, Stocker. Uh, Brandon. Uh, uh, Chitowski from uh, Shaker Heights will be coming. Uh, he's a restaurateur. Uh, he uh, is also an instructor of culinary programs and he teaches at the Grafton Reintegration Facility in Grafton, Ohio. He hires only at his restaurant, he hires only those who have gone through that program and who are uh, released uh, convicted felons. Uh, so all of his workers at that restaurant are uh, convicted felons that have been released who have been reintegrated into the system. Uh, again, it's a, uh, an example of social entrepreneurship. He will be going on at uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, he will present for about 45 minutes and then it will be followed by a panel discussion uh, uh, of, it's going to be, be uh, Dr. Beckstrom, uh, Dean of uh, Arts and Science. Uh, and then on the panel will be obviously Brandon uh, and then Eric Petrus who is a chef of Lorain County Community College, uh, the chef from Oberlin College because we're doing it in conjunction with Oberlin College and uh, also uh, Benny Kelly who is the uh, warden from Grafton. And then on Thursday all students at Lorain County Community College are invited to Oberlin College uh, from 4.30 to 6 to uh, meet with entrepreneurs uh, food entrepreneurs from uh, the greater Oberlin area. They will be meeting on campus and those entrepreneurs will be bringing food so there will be food available uh, there for you. Another way of networking, another way of finding out what's going on in the uh, ecosystem of uh, Northeast Ohio. So what can you do now as students? Before you even walk out of this classroom, what you can do is you can come up with an idea journal need to find a small notebook that you will have that you all you'll write into it is an idea and you write down all the ideas because as you go through life you will be coming up with different ideas you may wake up in the middle of the night and think of an idea write it down you may be driving somewhere once you get to your destination or pull over write it down okay you can keep it in I mean, you can keep it in your phone if, if you're geared to that. It's whatever you decide to do on that, number one. Number two, networking. Learn, enforce yourself. <clears throat> this morning when I was over at Phoebe, one of the, the speakers was saying that he agreed to do this part of, of Phoebe because it was outside of his comfort zone. That's what networking is all about, is get outside of your comfort zone. Go and learn people. You can learn from other people. Once you find other people, once you know other people, it's amazing what they can then turn on to you uh, and what you can turn on to them. And then the third thing is student competitions. Look at the student competitions that are going on. Even if you do not want to participate in the student competition 
that's coming up uh, on Tuesday, next Tuesday. Go there, watch them, see what your fellow students are doing. You'll find that you can do just as well, if not better. Now, when is the next student competition? If you don't want to go to the one on Tuesday as a participant, but you do want to go and observe, the next student competition is in February. It's the middle of February. It's called Idea Labs. What you do is you come up with a, an idea. You show the feasibility of it. You show the, uh, the viability of your idea. It's a seven-minute presentation followed by three-minute Q&A. You can go through that very easily. Go through that. And what is first prize? First place is $1,000. Now, it's $1,000 if you get first place. If you get uh, second place, it's uh, 500. Uh, third place is uh, 300. But if you get first place, also a little twist this year is if you have the best social entrepreneurship idea, you get $1,000 for that. So you may not win first place, but if you have the best social entrepreneurship, you can get $1,000 for that. If you get the, the $1,000 for the social entrepreneurship and also you win first place, you get $2,000. Now, that then goes on to regional competition. To represent Lorain County Community College at the regional competition, you get another $1,000. So you could walk away with $3,000. What's first place at the regional? First place is $5,000. You could, in fact, have $8,000. And it can be you as an individual or a team up to five people. So if you sort of skittish about doing it alone and, and getting up before people, get, get a, a friend or get a few friends, up to five people and you can present on that. So there's things that you can do and that you learn. And what will happen is, again, you're networking. You're networking with other students, other fellow students. The person that won student competition last year, first place, went on and competed in the Idea Lab won $1,000 in the Idea Lab, uh, went to regional, did not place in regional, but he, he uh, met other people and uh, has expanded uh, on his, his idea. So there's a lot of resources that are out there for you. Uh, <clears throat> and what you need to do is you just need to become aware of it. It's something that you can do as long as you have, if you go back to that first slide, PMA, Positive Mental Attitude. With that, any questions? Peter. Yes, Phoebe, the, the question is, does Phoebe 3 uh, go year-round? It's every Wednesday from 10 to 11, uh, year-round. The only days that it is not, and you can go on to the website. Phoebe 3 has a website, phoebe3.com. Uh, you can go on to the website and see the actual days. If there's a holiday or if it's the day before uh, Christmas or the day before New Year's, we do not have it on those Wednesdays. But it, it starts right back up. I think the first Wednesday in January is the 7th, and, and we will have it on the 7th. <clears throat> we will not have it next week because Phoebe 3 will be competing with Global Entrepreneurship Week in Brandon, so there will be no Phoebe 3 next week, but it will go throughout, uh, throughout December, then again starting January 7th. Other questions? <clears throat> The question is in the Destiny Entrepreneurial Center, is there anything going on besides the, the classes? There are, uh, for example, uh, tomorrow they will be uh, viewing, today the entire building is closed, closed because the Secretary of Labor uh, for the United States is coming in and is, uh, because the school has received a multi-million dollar uh, grant from the federal government and they're visiting, so they've closed the entire building. But uh, tomorrow, uh, if you recall, I talked about the Innovation Fund. The Innovation Fund is, in fact, meeting tomorrow, and they, are, uh, they will be uh, reviewing. There's about 15 companies that are, are entrepreneurial ventures that are coming uh, before them. Um, so there's events like that. Uh, they have events. They have meetings throughout the, the day. So uh, you, you should feel comfortable to go there, uh, poke around, see what's going on. Uh, it's part of the, the college. Uh, it, you're entitled to, uh, to walk around there. Other questions? Okay. Yes. The, uh, the question is, uh, I talked about the, ID, the uh, competition, student competition that's uh, geared for uh, next Tuesday. 
Uh, and then I also mentioned about idea labs that will be scheduled for February. I believe it's uh, it's uh, February, it's the, the middle of February, uh, and I apologize I don't have the exact date, uh, but it's, uh, it's it's the middle to th the second to third week of February. And what that is again, that's a seven minute pitch that you give your idea uh, with a three minute uh, Q and A. Uh, that the judges will ask, uh, ask you questions about your idea, whether that idea is feasible, et cetera. Uh, then the, the uh, regional competition, uh, we, <clears throat> the schools that are involved, there's uh, 11 schools that are involved, 10 of which are four-year schools. We are the only two-year school in this uh, EEC uh, Entrepreneurship uh, uh, Educational Consortium. Uh, the schools that are involved are Case, in a, if I can remember them all, Case, uh, University of Akron, Ashland, uh, Baldwin Wallace, Kent State, Cleveland State, uh, John Carroll, uh, Lake Erie College, um, uh, Mount Union. Uh, did I say Ashland University? Okay, those ten. Those ten are, uh, and we happen to be. Uh, having the regional competition on our campus is going to be over at uh, Spitzer and Soccer, a combination of both uh, uh, organization or both uh, centers over there. So you're obviously invited to join by, by uh, signing up with Blackstone Launchpad uh, with your Idea Labs. Uh, there will be more information coming out after Global Entrepreneurship Week. Uh, you'll see posters uh, on uh, uh, throughout the campus uh, talking about Idea Labs. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, I have cards up here uh, with uh, information on Phoebe and also on uh, getting onto Blackstone. Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Colson, for coming and speaking to the students and the class today. Uh, I want to remind everyone that everything he said is fair game for this week's quiz, so you could be asked about anything that he told you today. I also want to point out that as scary as the beginning of his presentation was about all the things you need, about having a lawyer and an accountant and a board of advisors and things like that, I know Tom Robertson has those things. He's a very successful um, indie game developer and I know he has that because I am on his board of advisors and when he has to make a decision like what should I charge for the 2.0 release of this, he goes to me and other professionals in the video game industry for advice on decisions like that, and it's very handy. And your board of advisors may be people who are in this room with you right now, and your uh, collaborators in business ventures you will have in the futures may be here right now. You're lucky. Tom didn't have a facility like Blackstone Launchpad to go to to teach him how to do these things. He had to learn these things all by himself but you can go to Blackstone Launchpad for free and get all the help you want for as many hours as you need it. With that, we're going to sign off this week from Intro to Computer Games and Simulations at Lorain County Community College. We'll see you next week. <laughs>